When Bungie released their most recent sandbox patch discussing how things like supers or grenades would have dynamic cooldowns, I thought for sure fireball grenades on Warlock would be the new favorite with a base cooldown of 64 seconds, which is better than any grenade in the game. But little did I know, a group of buffs to another grenade flew under the radar and as a result, this grenade is now, in my opinion, one of the best grenades in Destiny 2 and no one is using it. Yet. That grenade is the Axiom Bolt, and before you click away, trust me, you're going to want to see how powerful this grenade has truly become. For the most recent sandbox patch, the most commonly used grenade on Void was the Vortex Nade because of its overall damage and utility against things like Titan Barricades, Heavy Ammo Spawn, and Doorways. As for Axiom Bolts, they were just slow, and people seemed to easily outrun them, but then you bring in patch 3.4.0, and Axiom Bolt specifically got a pretty decent buff. As you can see for PvP, they increased Bolt Tracking Search Radium by 33%, or the radius at which an Axiom Bolt can search and detect an enemy to track to. So let's pause on that for a second. Exactly how far is that? First, I gotta shout out my friend Didi for being the first to bring these grenades to my attention. And secondly, from the testing we did together, these grenades have a tracking radius of 19 meters. 19. When using Top Tree Nova and throwing the grenade fully charged, which is actually insane, and incredibly generous for a grenade that already has tracking built in. Then they increase bolt movement speed by 10%, increase bolt travel distance by 15%. And on screen, you can see how fast this grenade moves now and how far it tracks. Can it still be outrun? Yeah, but if your opponent is chasing you at the same time, you don't have much room to stop and take that engagement without taking some serious damage. Speaking of damage, this grenade when thrown fully charged, and from now on, let's just assume I'm talking about Axiom Bolts in their fully charged state, does 125 damage upon impact. This means all it would take is a single headshot from a 140 RPM hand cannon like Aya's Luna, which does 70 per crit, giving us a total damage output of 195, which would finish any enemy running tier 7 resilience or lower, which is going to be a majority of players. Now, if this all wasn't enough to convince you that Axions are actually a meta pick now, then let me show you one more trick that my friend Didi and I discovered while testing. So the Axiom Bolt tracking can be dodged as long as they're an object between the player and the initial radius of the Axiom Bolt. By keeping that in mind, what we found was by throwing the Axiom Bolt above your enemy, 9 out of 10 times it would still track to your enemy since there is no object disrupting the radius and it still tracks to anyone beneath it. Meaning that if you want to almost guarantee your Axiom Bolt will track to someone, the best thing to do in most scenarios is throw it at the wall above them. And as you can see in the footage, it can be way above them and still track down to them very easily. All this will catch a lot of enemies by surprise because most people will think you simply overshot your grenade when in reality you were just guaranteeing it would track to them by throwing it above them. Now this plays perfectly into the current meta where you're seeing a lot more people camping in their rifts and people just playing more passively in general. Axiom Bolts are great for rift busting or pushing an enemy off their spot. I found a lot of success using them as play starters. I opened the fight with my Axiom Bolt and fly in behind them to force my enemy to choose to fight me or try to shoot the Axiom Bolt. Also, I no longer have to worry about a Hunter Dodge disabling the tracking since that also got nerfed in the most recent patch. Sorry about it Hunters. Overall, these grenades are incredibly powerful now and are great to use for an opening push or to force an enemy out of their cover or rift. Now that I've convinced you why you should be running Axiom Bolts, I'm going to go over the overall build and stats I've been using to really abuse this powerful grenade. I also have a community discord where you can ask questions, show off your favorite weapons, builds, and even Destiny fashion, so consider joining using the link below to link up with other Destiny players. Jumping into our build for this subclass and to get the most out of our Axiom Bolt, we have to start with our subclass and we're going to be wanting to run Top Tree Void. And the main reason we want to use this is because of Chaos Accelerant, which can allow us to overcharge our grenade, making it deadlier and more effective, allowing our Axiom Bolts to do a max amount of damage and increases their tracking speed. Uh, as for the rest of the subclass, uh, it is also nice having Bloom, because what you'll find is when you get those kills with your Axiom Bolt, the Bloom will also cause some collateral damage or kills a lot of the time, allowing you to get multiple kills with one or two Axiom Bolts. Uh, as far as the super, this is where you have the Nova Bomb or the Slova Bomb, as a lot of people call it. Uh, this is okay, definitely not my favorite part of this subclass. And then the melee is not bad as well. I find it to be actually more consistent in terms of its ability to register than a lot of other Warlock melee abilities, but definitely not the highlight. Main thing is gonna be Chaos Accelerant and Bloom. And then of course, making sure we are running Axiom Bolts, which out of all these grenades have uh, the lowest base cooldown at a minute and 31 seconds and then healing rift and our burst glide moving on from our subclass let's talk about our armor and mods and i will in this video have a section on my destiny fashion so a lot of you have been asking oh what's this ornament what's the shader what's this what's that so i'm just going to do a section in this video 
for you guys so that way uh you can get all those questions answered but getting into the stats and armor uh for my helmet i'm running hand can targeting and shotgun targeting again these things are always just going to match whatever the weapons i'm going to be using and i'll get into these in a second but i'm going to be maining a hand cannon and a shotgun for this build uh, so hand cannon targeting shotgun targeting nothing special there uh, in terms of this i'm running shotgun dexterity and can cannon loader this allows me to switch to my shotgun or pull my shotgun out and stow it a little bit quicker and reload my hand cannon faster uh, for our robes same kind of deal unflinching hand cannon aim and unflinching shotgun aim uh, again everything to help support making the weapons we're maining for whatever build uh, as crispy as possible and as consistent as possible and then next we have our exotic and this is tr i'm running transversive steps and this may be surprising to some of you because i've been running a fidian aspect for a long time but for this i actually have been preferring transversive steps a lot more the reason is i like that increase increased sprint speed and movement speed especially when i'm pushing super aggressively with my shotgun after throwing an axiom bolt i want to be able to close that gap as quickly as possible so that is why i highly recommend transversive steps for this build it's going like to close that gap get to your enemy a lot closer and reload your weapon along the way as you're kind of pushing in in tandem with your axiom bolt uh, also, as you can see from mods, I have Radiant Light. This is just to give me a nice little plus 20 boost to my strength to have my melee ability up a little bit longer. And then for our bond, uh, I am running Quick Charge with Outreach. I'm just doing this to get the Void, or the, sorry, the Arc mod. Uh, but Quick Charge gives you, I believe it's plus 20, plus 25 handling to your shotgun. And so this is huge. And what really makes me feel more comfortable taking off a Fidian Aspect because I'm not having a huge hit to my handling now on my shotgun without them since I have this quick charge mod and that again makes me feel a lot more comfortable running transversives because I don't feel like I'm giving up as much as compared to before when I would just not run the Fidians and everything would just feel super slow. Thanks so much for watching up to this point and if you've been finding this video helpful so far consider subscribing it's a totally free and easy way to support the channel make sure you don't miss any future build videos. Now getting into our stats for this build and you're going to see here we're going to really want to focus on a couple of things. The first thing as always is going to be running uh, 100 recovery. This is going to give us the quickest cooldown on our rift and just to overall increase our survivability by a whole ton. So I always recommend no matter what build for PvP you're running 100 recovery. Now the next important thing or thing you want to really prioritize is discipline of course because this is going to what's going to lower that base cooldown of a minute and 31 seconds on our axiom bolt as low as possible and you can see i found tier 8 to really be the sweet spot for me this brings my grenade ability cooldown to 45 seconds which is already way lower than i used to even have it before they nerfed all the abilities in 3.4.0 patch. So this has really been the sweet spot I found. Going much above this, you could, if you can get 100 recovery, 100 uh, discipline and not sacrifice your other stats too much, then by all means, uh, more power to you. I just found this to be a sweet spot for where I wanted all my other stats. Uh, as far as my resilience, that's also very important to me because I'd like to be able to take a little bit more damage, survive some of those closer shotgun duels, and I landed at tier 6, so I really like tier 6 as a sweet spot for me on resilience. Uh, mobility, I know this is triggering for some of you, but I feel super comfortable running 2, especially when I'm running transversives, and my transversives are going to make up for this lower mobility. And then tier 6 intellect, uh, this is just a sweet spot for me just in general, really regardless of any uh, super or build I would be running. But especially using Slova and Slova not being my favorite super, uh, this is more than enough intellect for me. And I still find I get my super back pretty quickly because I believe Slova is one of the quicker, not the quickest, but one of the quicker recharging supers. And then tier 5 strength just to get us around that one minute mark for our melee I find to be, again, another sweet spot when it comes to ability cooldowns. The most important thing you want to care about for this build, 100 recovery and 80 or higher in uh, discipline, sorry. Uh, again, keep in mind not going too much higher than this if you're really hurting in your other stats, but I found eight or tier eight or 80 uh, discipline to be the sweet spot here. Now let's talk about our weapons and our weapons are really what's gonna complete this build and get our axiom bolts as much as possible. And it starts with my eyes Luna that I've been farming for or had farmed for. As you can see, it's got true sight, armor piercing rounds, range finder, range masterwork, and the most important piece here, demolitionist. Kills with this weapon, generate grenade energy, activate your grenade ability, reloads this weapon from reserves. Now in the past, 
this perk was not always the most sought after it was definitely all right uh but i know bungie has definitely made some changes to it and i think in this current uh, meta and with this recent sandbox patch the ability to get your grenade back even faster on top of having some of these lower cooldowns if you invest in your discipline stat like you can see for us we have that 45 seconds this is going to allow you to have that cooldown even lower especially with something as powerful as an axion this really is an invaluable perk especially when combined with range finder it just makes it to where you're always getting a benefit out of using this weapon so you increased range here and then once you get those kills you're getting a nice little boost to your grenade energy so while our base cooldown is 45 seconds with demolitionist it's probably a little bit lower especially if you're getting multiple kills and then for my shader i'm running new age black arm range just for anybody that's going to ask um but i highly recommend running either an is luna or some kind of weapon with demolitionist for this build to really maximize how quickly you can get that axiom bolt back uh do not sleep on this perk again another nice thing is when you do throw that charge axiom bolt it's going to reload your hand cannon or whatever weapon that is running this perk from its reserves which is really nice from there i'm running my matador 64 with barrel shroud appended mag threat detector and opening shot uh, for these two perks i would much rather have full choke here but the most important thing is having threat detector and opening shot threat detector actually improves i believe the actual animation uh of your shotgun when one or two or you know starts multiplying uh that handling uh, stability and reload when enemies are close so this is great for just allowing you to switch quickly switch the shotgun and have it be able to react very quickly an opening shot to me is a must-have on shotguns just makes them so much more consistent and then handling that handling masterwork is also super helpful for just how responsive the weapon will be in terms of adsing and swapping and stowing and all those good stuff uh so that's just definitely what i recommend but again not exactly a god roll but most important perks threat detector and opening shot on the matador 64. and then for my heavy i'm running galhorn because this thing can easily get two three even four kills when you get that single kill especially if you have the catalyst uh so this is just super op in pvp um and we don't mind it taking the exotic slot because we got two really good weapons in our kinetic in energy slot here as for my destiny fashion or destiny drip as a lot of you guys like to call it i'm actually very proud of how my warlock looks i love the look he has right now and just so you can kind of see here when i'm running i have the streets uh scholar cover so this is with the 30th anniversary up here crucible carmine assault toxic for the gloves i like it because this particular shader kind of makes it all like murdered out or blacked out uh, looks very good midnight smith on the chest piece uh, i like it because it gives you like the hints of red and also the red along the edges here or these little dangly things uh, so i really like that aesthetic uh and then for mind striders that's the uh exotic ornament for uh transverse steps and i just leave the base because the base is red so it's black and red which if you can't tell it's what i love um and then lastly the street scholar bond with carminica just to kind of round out our black and red theme here so i hope this helps you guys achieve the desired look on your warlocks out there as you guys have just seen axiom bolts and top tree void are absolutely a meta pick in the crucible right now and i would expect to see a lot more usage of this ability and subclass in the future if you enjoyed this video, I recommend checking out my video showcasing the power of Bottom Tree Dawnblade at the top or an awesome Warlock Void PvE build on the bottom.